come to January 10th, the second work day of the week that we shall call a Monday on the year 2010. The day my wife calls the worst day. The old people call it the day of the moon. Well, brethren, let's get right on over into the Lord's care ministry. A year to keep your eyes on heaven. Day 10 of the year 2010. The eternal question. Brethren, again, I suggest you write these chapter and verses down so that you'll be able to study the whole context at your own leisure. You can use the pause button down here in the corner to start and stop this video study as you go along. That way you'll be able to read along with us as we go along. Well, brethren, with that, let's get right into the eternal question. And to do that, we'll go to Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. Also, you can find it in Matthew, chapter 6, verses 7 through 8. There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. If you died today, how certain are you that you would be resurrection on the return of Jesus? You may have been asked that question before. If you are a believer, you may have posed a question to others, or maybe it is something you do not think about much. Perhaps from time to time you lie awake at night and ponder the concept of God. Heaven, hell, and the coming kingdom of God, and all that those thoughts imply. But beyond that, the idea holds little value for you. You, maybe you have prayed to God without even knowing what you believe about Him. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, I encourage you to spend some time contemplating this important question. Because when all is said and done, it is only question that really matters. We are all going to die. This is a certainty of life. And when that happens, life is over and our bodies turn to dust. But our souls go on to another plane. There are no options available. If the Bible is right and God is real, then heaven or hell and hell are realities as well. If it is all fake, then there is nothing waiting for us after death. It is just that simple. One or the other is true. I have chosen to put my faith in God and the truth of his holy word. I have bet my future on the certainty of the scripture and have given myself entirely to God's will. It is not blind faith, nor is it based on fear and worry. I do not come to Jesus because I was scared of hell. I came to him because I wanted so desperately to be with him in his Father's coming kingdom. When I first began reading the Bible, I was told that God's word, and I wanted to believe that. Today, I know it is his word. It is a truth that is real to me as the air I breathe and the skin that covers my bones. Any hint of doubt about his authenticity has long since been laid to rest. Pardon my pronunciation, I have trouble with diction. I am as certain as God is real as I am that I'm sitting at my computer this moment because through my faith and prayers, God has shown himself to me. If I died this moment, 
I am certain that I will be resurrected when Christ comes. I am not simply hoping that I will. I know it. It is the single most comforting truth of my being. I live for the day that I will live forever with God and His Son. You may not have that certainty, but you can. Jesus assured us that if we seek Him, we would find Him. Why not give it a try? In what ways have you struggled to believe God's promise? If you are struggling to be, believe in the claims of the Scripture, why not pray in faith that God will reveal His truth to you? My Father knows. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 8 reads, Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust. Never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. Jesus said to believe every word of God, every word of Scripture. It took 45 men 1,500 years to write the Scripture for you. They did it for you and me. It's God's Word. God impaired them to write this so that we would believe and have eternal salvation with the Lord. If you want that salvation, then get down on your knees and repent from following the tradition of men. Make God's word. Make it count. Believe it. Not me. Not that fellow down on the street. Open your Bible and believe the Word of God. And if you truly want to believe Him and follow that narrow path to His kingdom, if you truly want to, He will help you on the way. And brethren, while you are on your knees, ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding of the letter that He sent to you. And that letter is found in your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.